fuck's sake. <laughs> so I was just having a joke about with something else. Any road, my name's my welcome back to the shop. And uh, it's that time of year again. Right, so this has all been fucked up. Let's just get my sponsors in there. If only they'd sponsor me, that's why they're not in shop. Um, last year, uh, me and Isaac started the uh, Chrome Cock Award. And the Chrome Cock Award, well, this is it. On and on and on. Comments like, he basically has a go at people for saying stop taking the piss out of Dell and stop trolling or whatever, and then he's doing exactly the same thing. Um, you know, he then went and called me, you look like don't fuck it, hellfire. <laughs> and in this video, um, I'm starting to do an award. Now, it was on Christmas Day, I believe, or something, can't remember. Uh, we're going to move that um, because of just organisation and stuff like that. It's not important, obviously, but I'm going to try and do this on New Year's Day. Now, I know I'm well late for that, you know, this is fucking February or whatever. Um, and what happened was, is I sprayed the cock with, um, and here's a picture of that, sprayed the cock with some chrome paint. Now, this paint is amazing, it really is, it's, fuck knows what's in it. But it really does almost turn anything into a mirror. It really does reflect. It's really reflective. It's amazing stuff. It must have like a planarising coating in it or something. Regardless. Um, and the problem was it wouldn't dry. Uh, six months later, you'd touch it, you'd touch it, and it wouldn't dry. Like, it was all over your hands. It might be something... I'll spread it on other things. It might be something to do with the silicon and... Um, the outgassing of the silicon and how the, the, the solvent for the paint, possibly, don't know. Maybe whatever silicon outgasses over time slowly is the solvent for the paint. Or maybe there's some other weird reaction going on that just stops it from uh, the solvent evaporating. God knows what it is, but it literally would not dry, right? I've still got it now. It's in a plastic bag. It's a year later. You can't touch the fucking thing. You get paint off your hands. It hasn't dried, it just slides off, it just, it's literally just like it's been painted. Um, where it dried on the stool within a couple of hours, you know, it was, yeah. So, we've had to get rid of that one, and we've got the new one, and as I said last time, this thing is going to build over time. So every year there's going to be a new addition. So this is now the standard setup, we've got the cock, we've got the plinth, and the year after is having wings, and it's just going to become a trophy, right? It's just going to get bigger and bigger. Any road, um, to win the coveted uh, chrome cock, we're just going to keep on calling it the chrome cock. <laughs> Obviously, because it's not. Um, we're going to call it the chrome cock, uh, the, the chrome cock award. And the way you win this is not by being a YouTuber. That will have it. That has its own separate thing, really, in a sense. And we'll get to that in the future. Um, well, in a sense, the videos are that, right? People get these videos done on them. I used to do Comment Corner. I'm going to continue to do Comment Corner uh, because, you know, it's just good fun. And what we're going to do is... Oh, the way you win this, the, the people who win this... Um, it, you know, we call it the Jeffrey originally because of Jeffrey who won it the first time. This is about comments only. So the cock goes to the comments where, well, they'll be explained each time, but usually it's because they won't let something go or generally because they get a right rag on about something. So, you know, because, eh, you know, people expect Dell to win this or Brock or something. They only leave one comment or two comments or maybe they might badmouth or say something in other comments, but it's not the same thing. I'm talking about what's on this channel directly instead of going hunting for what people have said to other people. Don't give a shit about that, really. Right, now, the winner uh, of this is a guy called Michael Hayward. Hayward, Hayward, Hayward. Um... And it's a very interesting story, so we're going to quickly go through this story. I've got, I'm out of the shop because I've got the screen up there, I need to read all this stuff. Um, but it's a very interesting story 
um, he, he has comments like, so we're going to start with these. So basically, this is the kind of comment I get these days off him. This was six months ago. And it says, uh, do you think it is not a tiny bit bizarre? Do you not realise how many hours of your life you are wasting by watching all his videos, making and editing videos yourself about him and his videos? How many hours tot it up and depress yourself further? The obvious elephant in the room is this bloke Dell is in your head. It is not mentally healthy, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Any rant about the blokes, uh, about the bloke, doubles your views. Cheap shots, as they uh, as they say. Maybe one day you'll get a life, have a life, and become a half decent human being with a bit of empathy and move on with your life. Um, so that was in response to a Dell video. We'll get to what all this means. Um, but the thing is. Uh, I was looking back today to just get some comments and stuff and he's got this tendency as Michael to delete his comments so he'll say something it'll stay up for a bit maybe a week maybe a month I don't know but then it's deleted for example here's one this is Kenneth McLean it doesn't really matter you know what he's saying we're talking about stuff um, you know, got two plug selfies, blah, 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 staffies, blah, 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 spotty, blah, blah. And then it says, Michael Haywood, cock, mm, my favourite. And then I've said, Michael Haywood uh, likes his own comment, enough said. And I can always tell when people like their own comment because the comment goes up. I get notified instantly and sometimes I'm on my phone, you know, I'll be fucking around on my phone. A comment will come up instantly and I'll go, oh, bloody hell. Um... You know, like it comes up like this, like notifications, it'll come up and it, I'll read it and it'll already have a thumbs up. The only way for that to happen, no one has a chance to read it. I get the notification as soon as it goes up. So no one has any chance to read it, never mind give it a thumbs up. And if it's already got one, it's because you put, and people do it, I've seen them fucking do it. There's a thumbs up for their own comment. Anyway, as you can see in this clip, there are no, there's four replies. So everyone's replying to Michael Haywood's comment and it's gone. And that was a year ago. This is the last comment. So what happens is, as you can see at the top of there, it says search. You can search someone's name and it gives you all the comments they've said. And as you can see again, we've got P, PRB 1098. You can see that there's only one reply. It's his own reply to someone who has disappeared. So Michael Haywood has said something and it's disappeared. And this was a year ago. This is as far back as it goes. But what these clever little schmucks don't realise is that I keep comments. <laughs> so it's a strange story is this because it all hinges around one thing. So I'll show you this one. So this is a comment from this. It says seven months ago, but this wasn't seven months ago. This was three years ago maybe it's because it was seven months at the time that i took the picture so this is michael saying stuff like stop it this one is even funnier the missus just asked me if i'm all right chuckling aloud the one before that you need to do stand up at the edinburgh fringe festival to an audience of fitter turners bring the house down he's taking the piss and laughing at the old del bollocks and you know you can't blame the guy Fucking, you know what I mean. Can't stop laughing, subscribed, got notifications set for the live vid. Ha ha, this is brilliant. Totally agree. Hilarious. Problem is, newbies and umpties will take his word as gospel. Like buying millimetre drills, taps and dies and crap lathe tools and wondering why they can't drill a hole, cut a thread or turn some metal. Garbage. Regards from a fitter turner or mechanic machinist, as they say in America. Right? Same thing, right? And then... There was a turn. And what happened was... We'll get on to what happened. I just want to also point out this. This is where we are now, right? This is... It wasn't 20 hours ago. This was a couple of years ago. The workshop can't handle the heat in the kitchen cyber bully. You are one, of, uh, one with a YouTube channel slagging off other YouTube channels. And I leave my comments up, yet... When there is a different legit point of view, you'll get all personal. Well, when you got personal with me and crossed the line with an unnecessary comment, including words and I quote, 
wife and kiddy fiddler. I don't know what that comment is because he deleted, like I say, he deletes the fucking threads or he changes his profile. Unquote, you cross that line. Where I live, defamation is being sued is very common. By ain't that type of guy. Patience is a virtue, virtue grasshopper. You'll hear from me next time I'm in England. Careful with that junction, Eugene. So, uh, the lightest threat ever, you know what I mean? But I can't what he said. He said something about... I do remember what the argument was about. And I can't what he said. I said something like... Um, here in the Philippines... He was been a wanker and he was going... Ah, and I said, here in the Philippines. I said, the Phili Philippines are, co are filled with fucking scooters and kiddie fiddlers. Or something like that, right? And he took it as, I've just called him a kiddie fiddler. He can go and fucking go off on one for all he likes. Any road, what happened was, is before all this cooked off, he was watching videos, he was saying stuff like the Dell comments and stuff. There's another comment here where he's talking to other people. This is engine progress and what was the biggest impact. Forgot to add my middle name is Luddite and none of my bikes have seen the dealer shop in over 35 years. If I can't fix it myself, I don't want to own it. And I own FI Guzzies 15 years ago too. And he talks in the next one. I think they're the wrong way around. But points, condensers, carbs, can't be it. FI, peh, a bit gay in it. Blokes in their sheds, mechanical capability and skills have gone down hill. The more modern bikes have become sensors and laptops, anybody. So basically he's making the point that anything that's over 35 years old, you know, younger than 35 years old, he doesn't want to touch, touch he's not interested. That'll become relevant in a minute. But he's basically just telling me points and condensers and carbs and shit like that. You know, that's the stuff he kind of uses. Which is fair enough, you know. I do videos about stuff like that. I want to get more into a bit of everything. So he's talking to people. He's engaging. He's liking the channel, yeah. And then what happened was, is I did the video about copper grease and spark plugs, right. And how... Sticking grease and shit onto threads that need to be sealed, thinking that they will seal, you know, it's a liquid, um, it's just a bad idea. You know, it's just it's wrong, you shouldn't do it. So he goes, uh, it, no, it does not make sense, disagree with you completely, uh, completely with your viewpoint, plug threads in alloy heads with a proper lube. From a bloke who has fitted and removed more than you. Well, I, it knows, obviously knows what I've done. And repaired other people's bodge jobs for over 35 years. Now, I'm not saying um, that he's done more plug changes than I have. I'm not saying that at all. And I'm sure he's repaired more threads than I have. Right? He's done been doing this for 35 years, a lot older than me. However, he doesn't know <laughs> that I work for NGK. He doesn't know I work for Denso or Bosch or anyone. Where my job could have been testing spark plugs and I could have removed 100 to 200 a day. He doesn't know that, right? You know, and it, that's the thing with these things, is the way they go on. He says, never used a torque wrench on a spark plug in 30 years. Normally don't on wheel spindle nuts either, but yesterday was a not normal spindle with a 100 foot pound, uh, pounds feet rating, so I did. And he just goes on, spark plugs, come on. If you ain't got the feel for 18 to 21 pounds, uh, best you stay away from spanners and sockets. Now... My point is here is, and I said this to him, is that 30 years experience. But what did you do right at the beginning? You just automatically had that feel. And I'm going to do some tests. Uh, me and some other lads, Craig, is included, stuff like that, just to give you an idea. We are going to do a blind test where we use the torque tester and tighten some bolts, different sizes, and say, do it until it's tight. Spanners, torque wrenches, Allen heads, we're going to do a range of things. And it's going to be a laugh because we're going to, we're going, you're going to, and we're going to be able to see what's going on. But the person doing it isn't. They have to do it by feel. And we'll stick some copper grease on and stuff like that and see what the differences are. Get a spread of people doing it several times and see what it is. Um, but we haven't done that yet, so we'll get to that. Never used a torque wrench on a spark plug in over 30 years. Normally, do I add that one? Uh, just stop now. And he's talking about Isaac here. Your tutorial and lack of knowledge, workshop experience and knowledge is not only dangerous, but you are sending young, impressionable people down the wrong route, i.e. workshop and engine practices. Ever heard of an engine stand 
a proper workshop factory tools or parts book or copy the pictures and make yourself as you are an alleged machinist complete fuckwit obviously he's got a stick up his ass then he starts shouting at other people <laughs> this is uh, Ford Windsor 351 the plug manufacturers have to this is when he was on about what plug manufacturers say it's called uh, litigation in the modern world when any tech numpty can sue after he's ringed a plug clean out at uh, clean out Problem mechanics with decades of experience who don't want to have to pull ahead necessarily will lube the plug threads, especially on cars, as they don't need a torque wrench, nor did they over or under tighten. And he's obviously got the evidence to back this up. Never ever seen a plug strip, a uh, thread stripped on the plug is always, I've done hundreds of repaired uh, thread repairs in alloys over the decades of which dozens were plug thread repairs, mostly 14mm, rarely 10 or 12, best plug threads lube is snap-ons, never sees, which has nickel in it. Nothing wrong with copper slip on any threads, especially plugs, certainly better than drying aluminium. Regards, turn a fit machinist over 35 years, how long you've been spannering that. <sighs> and then, every time someone says this to you, stop listening to what they're saying. And before you, this is another video the Alfred's tools any good and before you start foot with I have I have I had my hand tools last valued insured in their cabinets in 2003 in excess of 40 grand anyone who says that is a cunt anyone who says I've got 40 grand's worth of tools right yeah <laughs> so <laughs> that's like saying I'm the boss of Honda right Mr. Honda saying, I'm the boss of Honda, therefore I can do the fastest lap times. Well, no, you can't, you fucking prick. Right? That's why you employ Mark Marquez. Right? <laughs> so, this all started because he started with this copper grease thing. Me and him were getting on fine until we had a divergence. Now, you could say, well, it, maybe he's got a point, 35 years. I'm going to say this. Old engines have shit alloys. The casting alloys were shit, right? The tolerances were bang on. The tooling was really good, don't get me wrong. But the alloys were shit. He says, I've stuck grease on shitloads of threads and I've had to repair. And he goes on about helicoils and fucking time certs and stuff. But don't you see a color, a, a color, a color, a correlation there? You put grease in them, you're repairing them. You put grease in them, you repair them. And, like he says, I don't use anything younger than, 30, you know, anything that's 35 years or younger. Well, they're then shit alloys, old heads, God knows how many heat cycles, been sat still, then heated, then sat still, blah, 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 blah. It's aluminium, shit alloys, ugh. Fatiguing aluminium's a dickhead anyway. Old plugs, no coatings. The fact of the matter is, is that most people are not, and this channel is not predominantly about old 1940s, 50s and 60s engines. It's just a general thing. And if you want to go and buy a new plug for your old machine, you will be getting a new plug. It's very, 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 very hard to source a fucking age-old plug from the 1960s. So I sent him this, and this is a bulletin from NGK. Now, unfortunately, he deleted the comments after I said it, and it was such a pain in the ass. Because I said, read this, you fucking dickhead. And it says, the use of anti-seize compounds on spark plugs that have a metal shell plating. It then tells you, applying anti-seize to the threads of a spark plug and metal plating, blah, blah. Basically, the twist off. And loads of people have seen plugs that look like this, where they twist off where they've been torqued too high. You've got to remember the threads on a spark plug are hollow. Behind the threads, that is hollow. There's nothing in there. Just had to grab the pens. So, you know, when you've got a bolt, it's a thread, but it's solid, right? You can't fucking see anything. On a bolt, this is solid. On a spark plug, it's not. This is very thin, all right? There's fuck all to it. 
there's all this extra meat to take the torsional stress of a bolt. There's nothing here. This is why they twist off. And that's what they've found. And they've found after doing fucking millions of these. Let's make sure we've got the cock in. <laughs> um, you know, they've, they've done this after countless, countless testing. You know, that's what they've done. So they're saying... For spark plugs, our spark plugs, right, for all MGK spark plugs, they are coated with a special trivalent chrome chromate, a zinc chromate shell plating that is designed to prevent both corrosion and seize, seizure to the cylinder head, thus eliminating the need for any thread compounds or lubricants. But it's not just them. I also found a Denso one. This is the Denso page. You can go to the Denso page and it says at the bottom, there's a warning exclamation, if you tighten the plug to a greater rotation angle or torque than that is indicated in the table below, the engine may become damaged or the screw thread of the plug may break. So be careful. So it's saying if you over torque it, if you apply grease or any other screw thread lubricant to the threaded part of the plug, you are liable to tighten the plug to an excessive degree, impairing the integrity of the seal, even if you apply no more than the recommended torque. For this reason, do not coat the plug with screw thread lubricant. It is that simple. Dripping every time. Every time. So because of this, this is why Michael Haywood's getting this award, because he keeps on now and again, comes back to the channel, even though he said he's unsubbed and he's not watching anymore because it's a complete waste of time. He unsubs and stuff like that and he doesn't want to watch. Apart from very, very recently, he gave me a thumbs up. You know, he said, I'll just check on here. So I did a video here, which is uh, engineering, uh, engineering education rants, and he said a very, in commas, in brackets, rare thumbs up from me. And I said, wait, what? Did you read that NGK paper yet about copper grease and spark plugs? Of course he did. Of course he didn't. He doesn't care. The fact of the matter is, he's using all techniques, hundreds of thousands, and they always say shit like this, hundreds of thousands of mechanics and stuff are doing this hundreds and thousands of mechanics are out of touch and out of date right you get all these old boys like he said himself you show him what a fuel injector looks like he doesn't know what the fuck is going on things have moved on this would be like a farrier shouting at a quick fit mechanic or even michael himself going no no you're doing that all wrong the stirrups go there. It's like, where? In that bit where your feet go. What, you mean the pedal box? Fuck off, knobhead. The fact of the matter is, you're out of date. Right? You're out of date. Things have moved on. And what you think is right is wrong. And actually, what you were doing was probably causing the damage in the first place. Right? Have I got proof for that? No. But it's a good educated guess, I'd say. You spent all this time... Well, we kept on repairing... Why did you keep on repairing plugs? Why did you keep on repairing threads? If everyone knew when it was the old school way of doing it and everyone did it, there should be no damaged threads. I see it all the time. Guys putting fucking grease on threads on spark plugs. It's been sorted. Don't do it. How many people don't just read what it says on the box, right? Or even in the coffee break, read it. And if you're a mechanic who's been doing it for years, you read it and you go, I wonder why they say that. Maybe they want it to break, which is a ridiculous thing to say. But then you look it up and check. You know what I mean? People have put effort in, research, tests, stuff like this, and then you just go, nah, can't be. But it's weird how you enjoy the internet that was made by people who said the same thing. Do you know what those valves? They're a waste of fucking time. We can't make computers good enough. Do you know that screen you've got, that CRT? Now nah, we can do better than that. <sighs> Regardless, well done, Michael. This is, you know, yours, ceremonially yours for the next year. And uh, we'll just wait and see. You know, we'll wait and see. There are about six people who are in line to win this. You can't win this double in... You can't win this twice. Unless you come out with something that's amazing, you'd have to really, you'd have to outdo Dell, right? And he's well ahead of you. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, 
there are five people that are in the running for this. Like I said, the criteria for this is its comments. So um, there are five people that are in the running, so in a sense stacked up in, in a queue, and they can move up the pecking order, or someone else might come and beat them all. Who fucking knows? Just saying ridiculous things, isn't it? It has to be obviously convincing that these people really do believe this, like Michael, when I said... Yeah, I literally, I, I can't find it, he deleted it, but I said, here's a link to the NGK paper, and he says, well, that's just bollocks, <laughs> because <laughs> because you've taken out a couple of hundred plugs, and they've built millions of them, but what the fuck do they know? And he's like, no, that's bollocks. He goes, and this is the usual thing from assholes. they say, they would say that because they're liable, or could be liable. I'm like, liable for what? Well, if something breaks, yes. So basically what they're saying is, they're trying to stop you breaking. They're trying to stop you breaking their product, so it stops breaking your stuff. Put two and two together, you retard. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.